Well, today I want to talk a little bit about the mass air sensor or the mass airflow sensor. I have had a, uh, a couple codes, well, a couple codes pop up on the vehicle since I changed the changed the uh, cold air intake, and I'm really thinking that it just has to do with um, it's probably just you know moving the sensor around. I mean, I, I ended up obviously having to swap the sensor out from the from the uh, the old air box to the new cold air intake. Now, I think you know just from moving it around and just you know something either that or just the sensor was going bad, but I'm getting these error codes and um, from what I've read and you know and looked up and you know just things making sense uh, it seems like you know that's the culprit um, so the mass air meter you know the, the mass air flow sensor all it does is um, it'll regulate well actually it'll tell the computer how much air is coming into the to the motor in order to compensate you know with the gas to either put more gas or less gas into the system so that's what I'm dealing with right now now, when I get an error code, I'm getting an error code. Um, I think it's P0172 and P0175. I'll put it in the description and I'll put some pictures up. But what it's coming back at is, is a system reading as rich. Um, so it's saying that, the, you know, it says rich bank one, rich bank two. So it's telling me that both banks are rich. Now, with that, normally if it's an O2 sensor, which is usually the culprit when things are running rich or not. Um, it, just, it would just be one bank, it would, you know, but I'm getting the error message on both. So that's why right now I've kind of narrowed it down to the mass airflow. So I'm going to be doing just a, a quick video on me replacing that sensor. Um, and that should hopefully, actually, that should hopefully resolve uh, everything. So the mass air sensor, the mass airflow sensor is right up top. Uh, you can see it uh, right here. So this whole piece just gets swapped out. And um, and I'll show you, I guess, the error codes also. Uh, so hopefully, once that gets swapped out, that should resolve those codes. Now, those codes, right now, they're popping up mostly when the vehicle is at idle, like when I come to a light. But it'll be like you know a week or two before they pop up, or you know sometimes a couple weeks before they pop up. So I think that the sensor is actually just going bad. You know, um, you know that's the only thing I could think of uh, right now. So I'm going to swap that out, and you know that should resolve those issues with those error, code, those, those, uh, error codes that I'm getting. Now I used the OBD2 scanner in order to, you know, get those error codes. And actually that's what I use also in order to, um, to clear the codes. Cause you're not going to be able to clear those codes. Um, you know, on your, on your dash, you're going to get, um, on your display, you're going to get an error message saying, uh, check engine, you know, it'll say check engine, take to take to service or take to workshop or something like that. Um, and I'll, I'll put I'll put I'll put something up on the video showing you kind of what it says. But uh, this is what I end up. This one I use for a couple of things. Um, you know, I use this um, in order to to reset the, the oil light, which is the only way you can reset it. Is you know doing it that way. Um, also, error codes you can check them and you can also reset them which is what I used. Um, so that's what it looks like. You know, the other cable just goes into your OBD2 port. Um, so I'll, I'll show you in a sec um, how this whole system works, how it pops up and how I can, you know, run a diagnostic. All right, well, I'm in the car now. This is the actual scanner. One part of the cable goes in there. The other one, you know, goes, that's what the other side looks like. The wider side actually goes towards you when you're looking for the connector. The connector is down, uh, down here. And try to fit, easily feel for it. I can know where it you know looks like, just plastic. So, what you want, you want to find that, you want to push it up, and then all of a sudden this will light up on you. You know, that's what it looks like. So, what I do now normally is I'll just turn, put the car in the on position. I'll uh, put the key in, turn it to on. You don't want to turn the car on. You just want it to. So what you want to do now is you want to hit OK for the diagnose. And then if you want to do the, if you want to do the reset for the, for the oil, 
you know, or any other things, you go to the Porsche uh, option. If not, usually you'll end up using the OBD2. You know, with the OBD2, it'll do a check right now. I've reset, um, I've reset the the code that I had, so it's not coming up here. But um, you know, from there, you just hit confirm. And here you can erase codes. You can read codes. Let me see if it's picking up any codes right now. Is it okay? Okay. There's no fall codes. You hit escape. Let me turn the lights on in here. So, you know, but if you had a code, you could go to erase codes and it'll tell you um, clear reset emission related diagnostic information. You hit yes. Or you hit escape to cancel. So I'm going to escape out, and that's pretty much it for that. I just wanted to show you a little bit of the options under the Porsche menu. This is a Porsche specific. Um, there you go, you have oil lamp reset, brake reset, ETC. S reset and the steering angle reset. Those are all options I usually have to take into the dealership in order to have that done. I think I guess the brake reset is to reset the uh, the brake sensors when they you know when your pads you know when your pads are worn and down to the point where the sensors are triggered. Um, but I'm going to go into the Porsche menu. This you can actually use for uh, you'll see here all the different types of Porsches and from the 996 you know 996. You know, mine, which is a 997, there's a Boxer, a Carrera GT, a Cayenne, Panamera, Boxer, etc. So you have, you know, a wide array, wide array of different, uh, you know, wide range of Porsches that you can actually use this on. So it's a pretty good, you know, it's a pretty good thing to have. The OBD2 scan is great if you ever get a, a sensor. I mean, just for the fact that you can reset the oil lamp, to me, that's the reason I purchased it, but you know I had another OBD2 scanner, but obviously it didn't allow me to do any of this stuff, so I had to buy this one that was specific for the car. But now I changed my own oil, and um, you know I saved myself, you know, probably like three hundred dollars, because I think the dealer charges anywhere from three, you know, fifty to three eighty, I think, um, for an oil change. So I ended up just I ended up just picking up oil myself, and. Um, you know, it's definitely it's definitely worth the money. It's about 120 to 140 dollars, I believe. On I got it off of Amazon. Um, so this is what I used to reset the, the 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 error code that I was getting for the mass air flow sensor. Uh, so you know, I was able to reset that. It was coming on. It's not it's not coming on all the time. It's coming on like every couple weeks. Um, but obviously. It's annoying, you know, when you're driving and all of a sudden you get, you know, and I just want to make sure that that's what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to replace that. And that should take care of any issues that I have with those codes um, of the vehicle running rich. All right. Thanks. Well, that's what the sensor looks like. Um, let me move out into the light here. That's pretty much what it looks like. All right, I'm replacing the mass air, uh, the MAF, the mass air uh, sensor, and I've already loosened up the screws. These might be the original screws. These come with the kit, or something that I got to use with this kit. Um, so these might be a little bit bigger than the other ones. So just disregard that. And from there. This thing just comes out. That's what it looks like. This just has a little release here. You push that down, and this thing comes out. And that's how easy it is to replace. So let me just grab a new one. Looks similar. We'll see how this works. This this one here goes 
you know, it's got the same shape. So that's gonna go there. Once you hear that click, it's in there. Now this goes facing down. And that should be it. And that should hopefully resolve the issue that I've been having with the uh, with those running rich codes. <laughs>